Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Today we will cover a new topic which is hip joint. Hip joint is articulated between the hemispherical head of the femur and a cup shaped acetabulum of the hip bone. See here in this diagram this is hemispherical. Hemi means half and spherical is a sphere. So this is half sphere. It is hemispherical head of the femur and this is cup shaped acetabulum of the hip bone. So hip joint is the articulation in between these two structures. The articular surface of the acetabulum, it is horseshoe shaped. See here, this is horseshoe shaped and it is deficient inferiorly at the acetabular notch. This notch is called as acetabular notch. This cavity is deepened by a fibrocartilaginous rim which is called as acetabular labrum. The labrum bridges across the acetabular notch and here it is called as transverse acetabular ligament. The articular surfaces are covered by the hyaline cartilage. Again I will explain the hip joint is articulated between the hemispherical head of the femur and horseshoe shaped cavity which is called as acetabular cavity or articular surface of the acetabulum which is deepened by the acetabular labrum and here there is acetabular notch where the acetabular labrum is deficient and this notch is bridged by the transverse acetabular ligament. See in this diagram this is head of the femur okay it is articulated in the acetabulum of the hip bone. So this is forming hip joint. See here the capsule of the hip joint. Beneath the capsule there is synovial membrane. Okay and here there is synovial fluid. So present in the synovial cavity. So this is a synovial joint and the type is ball and socket synovial joint. Ball the head of the femur is the ball shape and socket is the acetabulum of the hip bone. So ball is fitted or it is articulated in the acetabulum of the hip bone. That's why it is called as ball and socket joint. See in this diagram again this is the ball or the head of the femur which is articulated in the articular surface of the hip bone which is acetabulum okay which is deepened by the acetabular labrum and it is bridged at the acetabular notch by a ligament which is called as transverse acetabular ligament. See here another ligament which is the ligament of the head of the femur which is also attached to the margins or the borders of the transverse acetabular ligament. So this is the ligament of the head of the femur. Here it is attached to the transverse acetabular ligament and on the other side its apex is attached to the fovea capitis. See here this is the ligament of the head of the femur which is cut here and shown its boundaries. Okay so it is attached to the fovea capitis of the head of the femur on the other side. I have told you that this is synovial ball and socket joint. Now I will tell you the attachment of joint capsule. Medially the joint capsule is attached to the acetabular labrum of the hip bone and laterally it is attached to the intertrochanteric line. See here intertrochanteric line of the femur in front and halfway along the posterior respect of the neck of the bone behind. So it is attached medially to the acetabular labrum and laterally it is attached to the intertrochanteric Trochanteric line of the femur. Now we will discuss the ligaments of the hip joint. First ligament is pubofemoral ligament. See here it is obvious from the name that it is attached to the superior ramus of the pubis. That's why it is called as pubo and femoral because it will be attached to a part of the femur. That's why it is called as pubofemoral uh, ligament. Pubofemoral ligament is triangular in shape. Its base is attached to the superior ramus of the pubis and apex is attached to the lower part of the intertrochanteric enteric line of the femur. Again I will explain the pubofemoral ligament is attached to the superior ramus of the pubis above or its base and its apex is attached to the intertrochanteric line of the femur. Now the iliofemoral ligament see here this is iliofemoral ligament it is inverted y shaped ligament inverted y shape base is attached to the anterior inferior 
anterior iliac spine of the ilium that's why it is name will start with ilio because it is attached to the anterior inferior iliac spine and then the uh, two limbs of the y they are attached to the upper part and the lower part of the intertrochanteric line of the femur so this is ilio femoral ligament this ligament prevents the overextension during standing now we will discuss the third ligament which is ischiofemoral ligament it is obvious from its name that it is attached to the ischium okay so this is attached to the body of the ischium near the acetabular margin and the fibers pass upwards and laterally and they are attached to the greater trochanter of the femur that's why it is called as ischiofemoral ligament now two other ligaments one is transverse acetabular ligament i have told you earlier that this transverse acetabular ligament it is formed by the acetabular labrum as it bridges the acetabular notch because see here acetabular labrum will be continued as transverse acetabular ligament and it will cover or it will bridge the acetabular notch now the ligament of the head of the femur or it is also called as ligament teres okay this is flat and triangular ligament it is attached to the fovea capitis of the head of the femur this part is called as fovea capitis where the ligamentum teres is attached and its base is attached to the transverse acetabular ligament and the margins of the acetabular notch this ligament is covered by synovial membrane so we have discussed five ligaments one was pubofemoral ligament then iliofemoral then ischiofemoral then we have discussed the transverse acetabular ligament and the ligament of the head of the femur in exam they can ask you the right the ligaments of the hip joint now we will discuss the important relations of the hip joint see here this is hip joint okay this is acetabular labrum or the articular surface of the acetabulum which is shown here head of the femur will articulate with this acetabular surface or articular surface of the acetabulum to form the hip joint these are anterior relations of the hip joint see here these are the muscles of the anterior compartment of thigh okay this is tensor fascia lata which will come laterally this is rectus femoris muscle then this is sartorius muscle this is iliosos muscle and this is the femoral nerve which is the nerve of the anterior compartment of thigh these are femoral artery and femoral vein which are also supplying the anterior compartment of thigh this is pectineus muscle present in anteriorly now these are the gluteal muscles first of all three gluteal muscles which are gluteus maximus muscle gluteus medius muscle and gluteus minimus muscle and beneath these muscles there are the muscles of the gluteal region which are piriformis gamellus superior obturator internus gamellus inferior and quadratus femoris muscle okay these are the muscles of the gluteal region now we have hamstring muscles also which are present here which are biceps femoris semitendinosus and semimembranosus muscle this is sciatic nerve which is the nerve of the posterior compartment of thigh now this is the medial compartment of thigh which in, which is showing the medial compartment thigh muscles this is obturator externus muscle this is adductor magnus muscle this is adductor brevis and adductor longus muscle along with the gracilis and this is the nerve of the medial compartment of thigh which is obturator nerve okay so remember this is very good diagram which is showing the important relations of the hip joint now the blood supply of the hip joint the arteries which are supplying the hip joint include the following first of all the branches from the medial and the lateral circumflex femoral arteries see here medial circumflex femoral and lateral circumflex femoral they are the branches of the deep branch of the uh, femoral artery which is also called as profunda femoris artery so these circumflex femoral arteries they will supply the head of the femur or they will supply the hip joint then number 2 artery of the head of the femur see here this is the artery of the head of the femur which is a branch of the obturator artery which can be acetabular branch or you can say this is a fovular branch of the obturator artery which is supplying the head of the femur these are the retinacular branches especially those from the medial circumflex 
फेब्रल आर्ट्री विच आर द मेजर सप्लाई ऑफ द हेड एंड द नेक ऑफ द फीमर एंड द हिप ज्वाइंट सो यू हैव टू रिमेंबर टू मेन आर्ट्रीज वन इज द रेटिकनेक्यूलर आर्ट्री ऑफ द मीडियल सरकम्फ्लेक्स फेमरल एंड अनदर इज द लिगमेंट ऑफ द आर्ट्री ऑफ द लिगमेंट ऑफ द हेड ऑफ द फीमर और इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज आर्टीरियल सप्लाई फ्रॉम द ऑप्चुरेटर आर्ट्री फोव्यूलर आर्ट्री और एसिटेबुलर ब्रांच ऑफ द ऑप्चुरेटर आर्ट्री विच इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नर्व सप्लाई द फेमरल आर्ट्री विच इज द नर्व ऑफ द इंटीरियर कंपार्टमेंट ऑफ थाई ऑप्चुरेटर आर्ट्री विच इज द नर्व ऑफ द मीडियल कंपार्टमेंट ऑफ थाई एंड शेयरटिक फेमरल नर्व ऑप्चुरेटर नर्व एंड शेयरटिक नर्व दीज आर द नर्व विच आर नर्व ऑफ द इंटीरियर कंपार्टमेंट नर्व ऑफ द मीडियल कंपार्टमेंट एंड शेयरटिक नर्व इज द नर्व ऑफ द पोस्टीरियर कंपार्टमेंट ऑफ थाई एंड नर्व टू द कॉर्डरेटर्स फेमरस इज ऑल्सो प्रेजेंट पोस्टीरियरली दे विल सप्लाई द हिप ज्वाइंट नाउ देर आर मैनी मूवमेंट्स अराउंड on the hip joint what are the movements number 1 is flexion can you see here in this diagram how the flexion at the hip joint occur this flexion is performed by the iliopsoas muscle rectus femoris muscle sartorius muscle and also by the adductor muscle that is the anterior compartment and the medial compartment muscles now the extension when we will bring our thigh and the leg back okay this is extension at the hip joint this is performed by the gluteus maximus muscle and hamstring muscles which are semi tendinosus semi membranosus and biceps femoris muscle now the abduction at the hip joint this is abduction okay when we will lift our thigh and leg and we will lift it away from the other leg this is abduction okay it is performed by the gluteus medius and minimus and it is assisted by the sartorius muscle tensor fasciae lata and piriformis muscle which are anterior compartment thigh muscles now the adduction okay it is bringing the leg back towards the other leg or the thigh it is performed by the adductor longus and brevis and adductor fibers of the adductor magnus muscle so the adduction is performed by adductors now the lateral rotation okay lateral rotation it is performed by the piriformis muscle obturator internus externus superior gemellus inferior gemellus and quadratus femoris muscle and it is assisted by the glute Yes, maximus muscle. Now the medial rotation. Okay, it is a, uh, performed by the anterior fibers of the gluteus medius and minimus and tensor fasciae lata. All these muscles are very very important. They will be asked in exam that what are the muscles which are performing movements at the hip joint. So first you have to write the names of the movements and then you have to write the names of the muscles which are producing those movements. important relations as i have discussed earlier anterior relations are iliopsoas pectineus and rectus femoris muscle posterior relations are the obturator internus muscle and the gemelli and the quadratus femoris muscle which is separating it from the sciatic nerve okay sciatic nerve is away from the hip joint and these muscles are in between superiorly we have piriformis and gluteus minimus muscle this is gluteus minimus okay and piriformis Then then inferiorly obturator externus tendon is present inferiorly okay this is obturator externus muscle now what is referred hip joint pain pain originating in the hip joint can be referred to the front and the medial side of the thigh because the femoral nerve is supplying both areas it is supplying the front of the thigh and it is also supplying hip joint so if there is pain in the hip joint it will be referred to the front of the thigh because femoral nerve is supplying both areas the posterior division of the obturator nerve supplies both the hip joint and the knee joint that's why sometime if there is pain in the hip joint it, it can be referred to the knee joint because obturator nerve is supplying hip joint as well as knee joint now congenital hip dislocation see here this is normal articulation of the hip joint the head of the femur is articulating with the acetabular uh, surface or the acetabular fossa or the articular surface of the acetabulum uh, and forming the hip joint but sometimes upper lip of the acetabulum see here upper lip of the acetabulum fails to develop adequately and the head of the femur having no stable plate form under which it can lodge it 
dries up out of the acetabulum onto the gluteal surface of the ilium. That what is happening here? This is congenital dislocation of the hip joint. The head of the femur has not lost in the hip socket, but it has come out and it has gone onto the gluteal surface of the ilium. Now the hip joint stability, the stability of the hip joint when a person stands on one leg, see here when the person is standing on one leg with the foot of the opposite leg raised above the ground depends on three factors. What are these three factors? Number one, the gluteus medius and minimus must be functioning normally. The head of the femur must be located normally within the acetabulum. The neck of the femur must be intact and must have a normal angle with the shaft of the femur which is also very very important. If one of these factors is defective then the pelvis will sink. See here the pelvis will sink downward on the opposite unsupported side. See here this is unsupported side. So what will happen if the gluteus medius and gluteus minimus of this side is not functioning normally then the pelvis of the other side side or the pelvis of the unsupported side will sink down. This patient is, set, is said to exhibit a positive Trendelenburg sign. This is positive Trendelenburg sign. What happens in positive Trendelenburg sign? If the gluteus medius and minimus are not functioning on the opposite side, the unsupported side pelvis will sink down. Now, what is osteoarthritis? Itis means inflammation. Okay, osteo refers to bone and arthro refers to joint. So, there is inflammation of bone as well as joint. The most common disease of the hip joint in adult causes pain, stiffness and deformity. The pain may be in the hip joint itself or it may be referred to the knee joint. As I have told you that the obturator nerve is supplying the hip joint and the knee joint. So, the pain of the osteoarthritis can be referred from hip joint to the knee joint.